Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another edition of the Middle Georgia Spotlight. I'm your host, Jack Ellis. We're pleased to have you with us this week and every week. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Caduceus Medicine and J. Franklin Automotive and WMUB, Channel 38 here at Mercer University. Let me hasten to add that the views expressed here are not necessarily those of WMUB or Mercer University and those of the producer and or the host of this program. I'd like, for you, I'd like for you to please watch us on YouTube, the YouTube channel, the Mills Georgia Spotlight. We are seen all over the world, so I'd like for you to like us there, subscribe to us, and share it with your friends. And uh, they would really be impressed this week because we have a man in the spotlight, need no introduction here in Macon. His name is Herbert Bernard, longtime civil rights activist, longtime elected official, uh, newspaper publisher, TV host, and, and retired from the railroad and everything else, Marine Corps, Vietnam veteran, and my friend, Herbert Denard. Welcome to the Mills Georgia Spot. That was a pretty heavy introduction. Well, that's who you are. <laughs> you, you know, we have to give credit where credit is due. Okay. You, know, uh, um, you know, you came back to Macon after serving in Vietnam and, and in the Marine Corps, and you saw some injustice, and you tried to uh, uh, straighten them. I understand that when you came back, you, you, I wasn't here. I was in Vietnam when you got back. Mm -hmm. But I understand that you and uh, had Elaine Lucas on last week, that you all with some firebrands here, that was still, what, what amazes me, though, you came back 67, I think, that we still had these walls of segregation up. I thought they had left in 64 or 65. No, they didn't leave. They haven't left yet. <laughs> Uh, when I when I returned, uh, it was Jesse Williams, Bert Bivens, and myself was arrested at the YMCA, trying to go there. I had a card. And this was what year? Which year? That, that was sixty eight. Sixty eight. The year that Dr. King lost his life. I was in Vietnam in sixty eight, and we still had a segregated YMCA in Macon, Georgia. It was segregated, and it never did unsegregate. They locked us up, ten of us. I don't know if you know Reverend J. W. Connor. Yes, he was there. Jesse Williams, Bo Williams. Uh, and Bert Bivens and myself, and 10 of us, Joe Gary, who was arrested. And uh, this was before Dr. King was killed. This was in like uh, April, March. 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 March before. About a month before. Yeah. Uh, we started it in February. So we had uh, the holiday off, they used to call it. What did they say? You know, I, I left here as a young boy. I, I, I thought I was a man. I was a boy 17 when I left Macon in 63, and we were still struggling. But 68, I thought that had gone. So what was their reason for not letting a Marine Corps combat veteran join the YMC, the Young Men's Christian Organization? They said, I still remember it. A guy named P.A. MacArthur was over it. Him and his son ran it. He said, this YMCA is for white people only. My God. To your face. Right. Yeah. No one heard. You heard that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't. And let me tell you something. I, I used to ponder over this for many years, and now I finally come to a conclusion. And the conclusion might not be right in some people's eyes. I think there are some white people that we need to understand that don't like you. Not because of anything that you have done. Yeah. But because of the are. way God made you. And I'm not mad at God for making me this way. Now. I'm I proud. Hope <laughs> right. But I'm saying, but because we. But have, that's a burden that we have to bear. Right. That is it's unfortunate, but yes, we, that's a burden that we bear. There are a lot of white people, a lot of white people, that don't like you because you are black. I know that. I tell you what you do. You go to uh, move into a neighborhood and it's all white. You won't be there very long when the house decides you'll go up for sale. And the house it just happened to me. The lady told the house. I'm not saying that's why, but Look here. a white lady moved out and a black couple moved in. Right. Well, when, they, when that happens, they start to move. When, you, when we start to go into the same school with Springdale, when blacks start going in, whites start moving out going to private schools. White people, a lot of white people don't like you. Yeah. Not because of anything yeah. you, but, but because you are black, and that's how P.A. MacArthur basically told us that. Yeah. Now, this stuff is, is circling back around, uh, this white supremacy stuff. Uh, with, never with, with, well, when I say well, it's back, uh, it's, it's above ground, it, I think it went underground somewhat. Uh, but it's, it's back now, and, it, and they're bold with it. 
And I think uh, Hillary Clinton called them deplorables. Uh, maybe the way she said it didn't make sense for, uh, politically. But are those are the people that, that's really adamant, supporting Donald Trump. You think those are the people we're talking? I think you have a lot of them. They. I'm not saying all people who support Donald Trump are racist now. I don't want to say that. Most of them. Anyone? <laughs> well, you said that. I said that. I mean, they. What caused this was when President Barack Obama. At eight years in there, they had a black woman. This wasn't a light complexion woman. You had Michelle Obama, a beautiful woman. She was the she was that, and they hated every time she said anything. She said, "Let's grow gardens. You could have a garden so you could eat fresh vegetables." Anything she said, she had a, 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 a blouse on or something that was no sleeves. They not, they talked about her on mm-hmm. everything. Everything brought. No matter what it was, and he was cool now. Yeah, Barack Obama was cool. He, you know, he he would get out on the floor and play with children. Yeah, everybody loved him. We thought, but that is the reason I believe Trump was elected. Yeah. That's well, they him a long time. We have to keep in mind too that President Obama only got twenty one percent of the white vote in Georgia. You know, so you're right. Only twenty one percent of the people. Not saying that they didn't vote for him because he's black, because some of them are Republicans. You, but, you, but, you, you're real nice. You give them an excuse. <laughs> well, you know, I'm willing really to give everyone the benefit of the doubt. I really am, and going until people prove themselves to be uh, un- un- unworthy of having that benefit of the doubt. But that that getting back to that incident is that what led you into politics? Is that you know you got into politics after uh, later uh, in your in your, your back here yes. because you grew up in Buffalo, born in Macon, grew up there, came back here. So you just say, this is the way to change this is through you politics? Know, when I, we first got involved at the YMCA, then a little while later they arrested a, a Marine, I think it was a or a paratrooper, I'm not sure which, which it was, at, on Sherlington Drive. They had a Sherlington laundromat. And uh, mm-hmm. I went in the laundromat to dry some clothes. Back in those days, a lot of people didn't have dryers. So I, w- I was home. My mother washed the clothes. I took them up there to, uh, to, to dry, wash them in, you know, for, the, for them to, to dry. And they were looking at They had a sign on the door for white owner. Mm. So you're telling me, basically, I was sitting here thinking, we have a Marine Corps sergeant who was killed in combat, gave his life to protect white young men, black young men, gave him the Medal of Honor. You're saying that had Rodney Davis been alive, and came back to Macon, had that, that Medal of Honor had not been awarded posthumously, that he would have been denied, as you were as a combat Marine, he would have been denied access to the YMCA. That's, that's, I, I mean, that's sure. sickening when it's, you think about it's it. A, I'm, you know, it's a lot of, I'm not saying all white people, because the people that know me, one of my heroes was Bob Steele and then the neighbor. I know. Both of them as white as they could be. Sure. But listen to me, most white folks, if you got in the swimming pool, they would drain the swimming pool. I mean, yeah. white people, a lot of white, I'm not saying everybody. This is, this is, I don't want you to misinterpret I, I, this as I'm going to get white. There are very good people, a lot of good people, but the majority of them, they don't like you. Mm-hmm. They don't care. I don't care what you say or do, as good as Barack Obama was. I mean, he didn't have any yeah. skeleton, no nothing, his record bad, nothing. They made up such good as Michelle was. Yeah. There are, there is a lot of white people in this world that do not like you yeah. because you are black. And some of them are right here in Macon, Georgia. Some of them. <laughs> but, Some of them. <laughs> but let me, I, I want to thank you for your trailblazing work. And I said to Ms. Lucas, I do the same thing because I'm, I was a latecomer to politics. You guys were here. See, I thought that struggle was over. See, I, when I left Macon, and you know, I, I was in Europe three years, and I went to Vietnam for a year, so that four year period from 63 to 68 was a very turbulent time. And I was out of the country during those days. And you guys were here on the front line. I assume. That is, I was in Vietnam when Dr. King was murdered. I assumed that the walls had come down and we were all living in peace and harmony. But then I came back from Vietnam in '69, and I realized that the schools had, were still segregated. They began to, but we still, I think it was 70 before we got rid of the door school system. 
in Macon. So we've been slow to, uh, in Macon to come to the party in a lot of it's not just Macon, but when they had the near and uh, we had Ballahus and, and they Apple, had a different yeah. white school. Apple, we had Apple, Apple too. They I mean, had Mark Smith and but we had when they had all those schools like that. And 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 when they immigrated them, white folks left. They went to private, That's where the private schools. schools. That's when they started. When black folks went in, white folks left out. And people are saying now that we're back to that with this ACE Academy. Look at that. That's they, the they are, they are that trying they to find there. a way to get white folks in a school without and paying those high. Right, that's what that's what happens. <laughs> they don't. And some of them, not, not all of them. Some of them don't want any blacks in them, but a majority of them don't mind if one or two blacks in there. Yeah. Well, I'm going to encourage them to those uh, uh, white people who don't want to be to send their kids to E. Lucas. Uh, academy. Now, <laughs> they, are, they would do that if, when they find out they could, they could get an education without going through a whole lot of other things. But well, I think I'm chief, but I, chief, but I mean that. Because right, but I mean, it's a bona fide school. It's a bona fide school. It's a bona fide school. It's a very good school. I state. always tell her she is the Bethune, uh, what's the name? Bethune Cookman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they're going to be calling yeah. Elaine Lucas. Yeah. Yeah. Elaine Hudson. McLeod. McLeod, uh, yeah. We're going to mess get our history right. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah Mary, Mary McLeod. <laughs> the Bethune, Bethune. Right, right. Yeah, from down in Daytona Beach. That was right. She built the school. Do you realize when she wanted to build a school, you know what they gave her? The land they gave her? A garbage. Up. Look at the first school was built on it, but she said, "Take it." Elaine Huckabee Lucas' legacy will be how many kids she got the education, how many people trained it. That's a good legacy. legacy to have. But, but well, let, let's talk about politics. Let's talk about uh, this election that we have coming up locally, the election we have coming up statewide, and of course nationally. Um, a lot of people say that this is a majority city, a majority African American city, so it makes sense. Not that we have to, because there are some white people leading majority African American cities, and I don't know too many black men leading majority black cities, not big ones in this town. So I'm not saying that uh, a white man cannot be mayor or sheriff or DA in a majority African American city, but it, by the same token, it should not eliminate uh, a black person. Where do you come down on? Where do you come? You have down? a knife for saying these things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you come down on? Where do you say Maynard Jackson, my hero. Mine too. And a mentor of mine. Right. When he was elected mayor, he made so many African Maynard Americans. Maynard Jackson, the first black mayor of Atlanta, Georgia, and the first black mayor of a major southern city. That's what we're talking about. He made so many black folks rich. He told some of the people in uh, Atlanta that didn't want to do business with black people. He said, well, we'll get somebody from Chicago. It's the big companies that they bring in the Herman Russells and other people. And when they found that he was serious, they went back and hired a lot of black folks to help build the best airport, the business airport in the world. Not just in, in, in this country, the business airport in the world, Atlanta. Yeah. Built on the Maynard Jackson. Okay, yeah. when Maynard uh, uh, served his four years, he campaigned for Andy Young. No, eight years. He served, uh, served two, two terms. Two terms, terms four yeah. years, eight years. He served his eight years. Then he campaigned for uh, Andy Young. Andy I remember. Young. I remember. They tried to get a guy, I can't think of his name now, to run. Sidney Marcus. Sidney Marcus. I remember that campaign right. so well. And there was uh, Maynard and a lot of dignified black folks. Yep, I remember. It was a couple of them. Maynard called him Hankers' his head wearing Negroes. That's what he called it. <laughs> Shepherd and grinning Negroes. That's what he called it. After Maynard came home so hard, he said, Andy, has, he gave me Andy's history, which is ambassador. Yeah, everything. Uh, no reason second, why second, in, second to Dr. King. Forget about that. Yeah. He was the person that, that yeah. he was with. He was the chief. And he draft. finished, and then he served as an ambassador, a congressman. Then Sidney had never been outside of Atlanta, he said. <laughs> Yeah, he's the president he's talking, of the Atlanta City Council, I think. Look, he finished talking about them so bad. All the people had to have ads on the radio. They removed those ads. <laughs> but anyway, sometimes you have to call people out. After Maynard was elected, Andy was elected, and they have never had a white mayor since. Now, we had some bad black mayors. Some of them went, one of them went to jail. But I'm saying, but he had a string of people yeah. that got things done and put it together. 
Everything black is not good. And Everything white black. is not bad. Exactly, but, but, but the land has thrived under the uh, mayor. Under the mayor. Yeah, it's been a, a, right. a, a so so. But in Macon, we had one mayor, black mayor. <laughs> he was a good guy. He worked. He gave some contracts, some insurance contracts, to a black man. When the new mayor got in, he got rid of them and <laughs> just switched it right back to a white person. I mean, just little small yeah. things. Yeah, well, one they thing. didn't have news conferences. You didn't read this in the papers. But you had a, a sense then we haven't had a mayor, a black mayor. Mm -hmm. A majority city, every majority city, I'm not going to say every majority city, but Atlanta is where I look to the hills. Yeah. Atlanta, well, Atlanta Detroit. Detroit has a white mayor now after Kwame went to jail. And I think people kind of soured on them. And I think, uh, you know, so people have a right. But, but let's get back to where we are as a city. I read in the paper, in addition to the health inequalities, education uh, disparities, but race relations in this town, and you, you've spoken to it in a, in, in a very blunt way, but race relations in this town, we still, as a report came out, that we're one of the most segregated cities, not just on Sunday morning, but our, our, where we live, where we go to school, obviously where we worship. Uh, Ballard Huston Middle School, I went there, that was Ballard Huston Junior High, it was an all black when I was there, 60, 61, whatever it was. I went over there the other day. I didn't see one white child. So you, it's you, right, could, you could go so to Peter Chaplin. So, so you said it's because the white people moved to the suburbs, moved to the school. Uh, they let me just say don't this want to go to the school. Again. Understand this. Most white folks, most, don't like black folks. <laughs> I know this, this is hard for a lot of people to really understand it. I went through all of this. Then recently, I don't read a lot. I read uh, what they call uh, audio books. Mm -hmm. And they have, they have the exact same book, except while I'm driving around, going places, I can hear it all. And, and, and they have a book called Fight, White Fertility. If you read those books, you will see, in, in this country, especially in the South, but in this country as a whole, yeah. They they don't like you. Yeah. Now the, we a lot of us want white people to like you. Yeah. I would love for everybody to like yeah. me. But, but you know, if they don't, I don't care. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to play devil's advocate because the devil has enough of those already. He doesn't need another one. But what people would tell you about living in certain places and and they would say there's too much crime all of this because when you look at the newspaper the other day they arrested 33 people in this town. They put a, there was one white face. So they would say they are criminals. They 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 are they are killing each other. They're stealing. I don't want to be around them. What can we do? I mean that we know that attitude. We know that that's a very small percentage of black people that's doing that. Wait a minute. But 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 what I'm saying. What? How do we get across to our young people? We have lost them. They have lost us. They have lost their direction somehow. With this, what, where, where do we go wrong here? Let me tell you something. One of the ways we went wrong, we have more black men in jail. They are in jail. And white people uh, using drugs, for example, they use a powder cocaine. They gave them one sentence. Use a crack cocaine. They gave another sentence. They, uh, the war on drugs focus in the lower income areas. It's been said, if you go to the emergency room and find people that that was brought in over an overdose. There's more white people brought in on overdoses. They didn't focus on that. They focus in Bellevue. They focus in East Macon. They focus everywhere else. I mean, the people, black people, are on the on, on, on the highway, the interstate. Somebody did a study. I think it came out after Obama, right around the same time. The people that was uh, arrested and pulled over on the on on the, on the interstate. Most of the people get tickets are black. So it's most of the people on the interstate are white. Are white. So it goes back to the stop and frisk thing. That you're, it, you're it, a target. That, that's what they call profiling. They, they profile. They profile. They, when the drug thing, they go on the Greyhound bus, they pick out a person, they pick out a, 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 a young black person, and they search him. White person, white woman, white man, white. They don't, they don't pick out all them. They, just, they, 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 they got them. They went to court. They went to, I think, mm -hmm. went to the Supreme Court, and and, and they let it stand that they could, the police could decide who they who they choose to do it. And what, and then you have, uh, and then they they gave 
weapons, money, and everything to the police that, that arrested so many people. Mm -hmm. Who they target? They park. They targeted black folks. Well, hopefully they make legalize marijuana and stop arresting these kids for doing that. They because, got people you know, jail. I think about it not in Vietnam, man. Everybody smoked marijuana. Everybody right. I knew, you know. Right. But it, it's and, not, and it's, it's not the marijuana. <laughs> yeah. It's not the marijuana. But, but, it's the but, blackness but, that you yeah. carry with you. Yeah, but get it back to this thing that you were talking about in the disparity. We know that methamphetamine primarily used by white people. And they say poor white people. That's what the, the, the news would tell you. The, now, opioids primary. Pain pills, primarily. Now they say that opioids now is a crisis because people are addicted to it. We got to do something about it. It was not a crisis. It was a crisis. It was no crisis then. So that's the, the, that's thing, the difference. The thing, thing. thing that really you have. In other words, it's right in our face. Is what police arrest when they have police arresting people for speeding tickets. I'm, a person told me the other day that they had had so many speeding tickets because they ride on the interstate a lot, and that he. His insurance is about a thousand dollars a month, mm. a month mm. on a car. And so one car, yeah, one car, thousand dollars a month. How can he, he has some he had traffic tickets. Oh, but but what I'm telling you is that they tend the police sitting there and watching if he passed by. And, and I, I need to get the book to tell you, tell you exactly what it was. They checked the number of people passing, and it was something like twenty or twenty five percent of the people along the interstate. That was black or Hispanics. Uh, the most of the people on interstate that was getting tickets was about fifty percent black. Mm -hmm. that, but not yeah. all of this is not an accident. Yeah. We pay the most money for traffic tickets and all kind of other tickets. We pay the uh, when, when there's an arrest or something, they go over there and they, they shine all the lights on black folks. They get arrested. I tell you what you do: go down to the municipal court. Go to the municipal court. You'll think they're making a Tarzan movie down there. They got mm -hmm. so many black folks in there. For <laughs> all kind of things. White people are not there. And, and, and somebody said, well, they pay theirs in advance. We checked the records uh, 20, 25 years ago. I had some Mercer students checking me. What we found out was they wasn't getting the tickets. Mm -hmm. Black folks are getting the tickets. They get everything. If you let them... Uh, explain it to us. We are the worst things in the world. We can't drive, but when there are, there are accidents, it's, it's, it's equal. When they have to put something on record, accidents, black, white, it's about the same. A little yeah. more white than black. Let me tell you something I discovered recently that people need to be aware of. You're a former military person, so you're authorized to have USAA. I'm a USAA person. My insurance went up. You know what? The lady told me my insurance. I was talking. Why is it insurance? She said, Macon, Georgia has the worst accident rates and more insurance claims and fraudulent insurance claims than any place in America. This is USAA. Told me this. Lady sitting in San Antonio, Texas. So, so sometimes what we do, we cause other people to have high insurance because of things that we are doing. Or in certain black communities, insurance much higher than it is in other places okay. because they say it's a lot of claims for okay. breaking and entering that. They so this thing has an economic cost to it. It has cost huge. You've got to pay a thousand dollars a month for insurance. And the people that are paying a thousand dollars a month for insurance are black people. Have you looked at pictures sometime long years ago? It used to bother me. I didn't figure it out then. You looked at a picture and you saw all of these uh, uh, white people around like having a picnic. They have two or three black folks hanging. Have you, seen, have you looked at a picture? Oh, I went, look, I went to a house, a yard sale, <laughs> a, a estate sale recently in a pretty upscale neighborhood here. And I went in there and the thing, the big picture that this guy had in his house that he thought was a black woman eating a watermelon on his wall, that, that's he thought that was, and said, praise the Lord underneath it. I bought it and I have it in my house. <laughs> now, but what I'm know. saying is that, that black folks, uh, white people, they were hanging black folks in that time, and they had a little picnic where people would go watch it, and they had a picture made of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, they didn't they didn't feel bad about it because they didn't. White people really they brought the children. They 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 didn't look at us. Uh, what can we do to close this racial divide, though, Herbert? I mean, uh, granted, it's up to white people too. It's not just up to us it's because we're the reason not, that some like. Uh, 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 when Commissioner Lucas was talking about the Martin Luther King parade that we have, and people, 
We see very few white people show up, and they have to. They're admit, not going to show up. They don't like that, you. They, they don't like King. But they have to admit that Dr. King saved this country. They don't have to. Have, they don't admit nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because <laughs> why, else, why else do you think so many people like Trump? He doesn't know. He's a businessman. Let me tell you how, how, how he's a businessman. All the environmental things, the, the oil people, the, the gas people, he cut all of that out so he can put blue air. And, and that is why the economy is holding pretty good. Because they don't have to pay for the, the you know, all this environmental things, cleaning up the environment, the yeah. cars, the factories, the tax rights, tax right. no, no, so let's, let's, let's get back to us. No one can save us from us but us. When I say us, I mean people who look like we are. And we have to admit, Herbert, that we have some young men in our community. They are fathered children. They're not taking care of their children. They are not being respected for the mothers of those. Of those. Uh, of the, that, that's that admit. Now we've got to call that. We've got to call them to task as well. The take care of your children. Look here. Look here. Mentor you. That's, take care of your the sons kind of and daughters. That, uh, huh? uh, I'm, I'm not saying that's what the problem is. No, I'm not. Look here. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've heard those Negroes say all that stuff. <laughs> They got most black men in jail. If you go to the Beard County Jail down there, let's say they got a thousand people, probably nine hundred or something are black, nine fifty or some, something like that. So you're saying they are there? Uh, they're, they're they are falsely targeted. accused, or they've been targeted? They're but tar- if they, so what you were saying? If we target the white community the same way, it would be worse. It would be worse. Or worse. It'll be worse. Because the profile and the targeting and discrimination. And then, then the, and white, the white policemen. They are, they lock up uh, black folk, and the black people that own the, on 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 the uh, 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 policemen, if they start arresting white folks, they, they'll lose their job. So they're not going to just make a name out of themselves and go start arresting people for minor things. That most of them go along with the flow. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Herbert. A lot of people, you know, that you you sold the newspaper, so you retired yeah. from your job, you retired from politics, so to speak, but you're still in politics. So how are, you, how are you spending your time these days? Okay, so you say you're going to be 75 pretty soon. Yeah. And I, I want to live. I want to be happy. I want to do things for others. And, and, and this might give the wrong. I love everybody. I know that. Life is too short to bear hate. What I'm telling you is the bare yeah. fact. Yeah. White folks don't like you. And we need to they don't like right. us. I, we, it's not so much I, when I say things. we, I mean the country. The, 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 the Look, I can't explain why. And I keep try to, but the real thing is when you come to that realization, that white people don't like you. Most of them, not all of them. They're, they're good people, but most of them do not like you. They don't want you around their house. They don't want to live in your neighborhood. They don't want to belong in clubs you belong in. They definitely don't want you to date their daughter. It's, it's deeper than that. They don't like you. Period. Yeah. But now, uh, let me I tell you, I'm time's about what? running out. But JB Stoner, yeah. I was down there in, in Wrightsville. Yeah, time is running out. I was down in Wrightsville, and JB Stoner was down there. And, 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 and Dr. Lyle was there. He was praying. I prayed the Lord that, that we do this here because when we get to heaven, and then he came in and Stoner said, black folks don't go to heaven. And white, another white guy said, yeah, they go to hell. He said, no, they don't go to hell either. They just die like a dog. Wow. <laughs> On that note, let me wish you a very happy holiday season and keep on doing what you're doing. For some reason, that, let's not give up on young black men. Some of them are uh, need some guidance, and they need some guidance people like you, people like me, uh, so that they don't get caught up in this uh, criminal justice system. Because, like you said, the stack, the deck stacked against them. So we must let them know that. My father used to tell me there's certain things you can't do to other people. Not right, he says, not right. But then, like when I wanted to go to Lanier, I wanted to wear the uniform. He said you can't go there because they don't allow black guys to go to, to go to ROTC at, at right. Lanier. But it wasn't right, but he said, don't let that keep you from doing whatever you want to do. And it didn't. I wore the uniform for 21 years. And let me thank you for your service and thank you for your service, not only for the country, but to this city and continue to serve. And if you vote for Trump, I'll know about it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> the streaming eagles are not to all. <laughs> We're going to speak with Herbert Denard, who has been a community activist, civil rights leader. Uh, elected official, newspaper publisher, father, husband, grandfather, and just an overall good guy. We thank you all so much for joining us. 
Until next week, I'm your host, Jack Ellis. Goodbye.